you worked on generative neural radiance fields. So uh, the the short form for that is like Nerf, like the Nerf guns. <laughs> uh, so N, uh, capital N, lowercase e, capital R, capital F. So neural radiance fields. And so these generative neural radiance fields, generative Nerf, uh, these allow 3D scene representation, which obviously we've talked about a lot already in this episode. How did the Nerf stuff lead to the kind of 3D object generation stuff that you're doing today? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Let me give a little bit of background on Nerf. So Nerf is a Berkeley homegrown uh, paper that came out around our TTPM paper as well. What a Nerf is, is it's a representation of a 3D scene in a neural network's weights. So with normal neural network, you picture a model which can take in data and then output some predictions and generalize to new data. So during training time, it's train on certain input-output pairs and then can generalize at test time. Um, a NERF is actually extremely overfit. It's basically, it's like a JPEG where you take some neural network representation of a scene and you pack in visual content for a particular scene in the world into that network. So you can sort of imagine, let's say you have this 3D environment, a room, an indoor house. You can represent that with a bunch of photos. You can represent it with these meshes that I talked about. Those are the meshes are human created representation. A NERF would automatically learn a representation of that scene that stores the colors. The wall is white, the guitar is yellow, um, but it would also store some elements of geometry. At this coordinate X, Y, Z, there's a lot of matter. There's something here that's absorbing light. In this area, this other area, X, Y, Z, is free space. So that's really, it's a lookup function, mapping from X, Y, Z coordinates in space to color and to density, telling you the amount of matter in that space. That's what a NERF is. It's a, I think of a NERF kind of like that JPEG. It's just a representation of a 3D scene that allows you to interpolate really nicely to new camera poses. So unlike a JPEG that expresses a single perspective, with a right. NERF, if you train it, you can now run it at a different perspective and interpolate between the different input images. And so how does this connect to generative media? Yeah, like how, how does that create? How, like So I mean, it, it's obvious the kind of connection there. So So you're using a neural network to store information about a scene so that um, regardless of you know where in the scene or what angle in the scene you want to render, all the information that's needed is there in the NERF uh, representation. Um, and so it's actually, it's pretty obvious to me how that's useful for the kinds of applications that we were talking about much earlier in the episode, where if you want to be you know rendering uh, scenes for a film or you want to be rendering 2d images um, of some 3d space this is going to be uh this is going to allow you to do that i guess my question is how does how does that nerf work relate to the kind of work you've been doing more recently at genmo for example or at berkeley um, i suspect that you're that there's like some kind of connection some kind of um, yeah, some kind of continuity um, and, and improvements over the years. Yeah, so I think all of this is connected to this vision of creative general intelligence. These are different instantiations of what I see as that general purpose creative model. Um, some of the, that model learns how images work. You know, by denoising images, it learns what's the content of visual worlds, but doesn't know anything about motion. It doesn't explicitly know anything about 3D geometry. We also train models on video. Those models know more about geometry because they see objects moving. They see cameras moving. It knows about how objects move, so it learns some interesting things. Um, then we develop a lot of algorithms that can take these general purpose visual priors that have learned how the world looks and how the world works in an abstract level and distill them down into something low level, like a NERF. I call NERF low level because, again, it's just storing the contents of the scene. We need these really powerful generative models that learn how the world works and then a powerful algorithm that we develop at Genmo to distill these visual priors into this interpretable 3D representation. Right. And so, so that's kind of like a post-processing step to take right, this, right, right. This, this foundation right. model we are developing and then extract out not an image, but extract out a 3D scene. Very cool. That's awesome. So yeah, so, um, so they're related in the sense that we're still talking about, yeah, reconstruction of a real-world scene. 
but the nerf stuff doesn't actually generate. It's not yes. like it's it's a it's a map for for regenerating something that has already been conceived. Mm -hmm. um, but the Genmo stuff that you're working on today, yeah, Genmo could equally output pixels or this nerf representation. And that nerf representation would have much more flexibility in the sense that somebody could take that nerf representation and render it however they like. So you'd kind of have, it's actually, it's kind of interesting. It ties in maybe with that idea that you were talking about if we wanted to have um, a bunch of different shots in the same scene in a film or a TV show, and you want to have that consistency scene over scene, this kind of nerf representation could be perfect for that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It's um, by synthesizing out the sample that's 3D consistent, you're 3D consistent by default when you go ahead and render a camera trajectory. And a camera trajectory rendered out is a video. Now, there's still a gap here, I think, when we come to video and motion, where these nerfs are static. They don't mm -hmm. actually express motion. Um, but this is some of the things we work on at Genmo. We build a foundation model. And then for different customers that want a particular format, we build these algorithms that can extract out that really high fidelity version.